Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Elise Randver, and I welcome you today on Tallinn Navesi's webinar. The webinar will be hosted by the chairman of the board, Carl Brooks, and chief financial officer, Rina Kay. First, Rina and Carl will introduce Tallinn Navesi's financial and operational results for the first nine months of 2019. Uh, right after the presentation, we will be answering all of your questions. Um, we have uh, received some questions in advance, but if at, some, at any point during the presentation you feel like asking a question, please use the question box on the right-hand side of your screen to type in your questions and send them to us. So, as said, all questions will be answered right after the presentations are done. Now, I will go give it over to Rina Gay and Carl Brooks for the presentation, please. Thank you, Elise. Um, good morning, everyone, and uh, a warm welcome to the Q3 2019 webinar. Um, as usual, I'm going to give you an update on operational performance and also the uh, tariff dispute tariff application, and then I'm going to hand you over to Rena to take you through the financial results in uh, in a bit more detail. So, first of all, the the operational results. Very ple pleased to say that overall, the operational performance of the company has been very high. Um, the leakage in the network is currently at an all-time low of 12.5%, and the final effluent that leaves our treatment plants at Polysair is, uh, is fully compliant, which means we've not had to pay any additional uh, pollution tax this year. In terms of water quality, the overall compliance is 99.1%, but we have had some localised issue in the extended water network, and this links to the introduction of a more sensitive test by the Estonian Health Board. Um, this test is an, used as an indicator, and as a result of that, we've had to do some further flushing and cleaning work in the network. We are working in close cooperation with the Health Board uh, on this topic and the transition into the new transition, uh, into the new testing regime. Uh, it should be noted that the quality of the water leaving the plant at Ulu Misti remains very high, and of course, we will be making targeted investments um, to make sure the plant uh, op uh, operates at its op optimum efficiency going forwards. Um, we work very hard to, to provide uh, an excellent service to our customers and I'm very pleased to say that our overall satisfaction score has improved slightly up to 4.2 as for maximum 5. So first uh, moving on to the tariff dispute. Well I'm very pleased to say that the, the tariff dispute now is effectively over. And the company now has an approved tariff in place, which will come into force from the 1st of December this year. At the same time, the supervisory proceedings against Talon of AZ, linked to this tariff, tariff application, have also been dropped by the Competition Authority. This marks the end of a dispute that has run for over nine years and has consumed an inordinate amount of management time and, of course, the support from external lawyers. Uh, in recent months, we've also um, made the payment to the Estonia for related to the legal costs linked to the judgment of the international arbitration claim. When, when implemented on the 1st of December, this new tariff will see domestic water bills reduced by an average of, sorry, will see water bills reduced by an average of 20% in Tallinn and Sauer. Um, the company uh, we'll also be looking going forwards at ways that we can recapture some of this mission revenue going forwards. And this is something I've talked about on previous webinars. So opportunities are in Watercom for further growth, and we will be looking at target efficiencies in the main business. Okay, so that's the update on operations and the target dispute. I'm now going to hand you over to Rena to take you through the financial results in a little bit more detail. Thank you. Thank you, Carl, and good morning to everyone. Now I would like to give you the overview of the financial performance of Actusel Stalin Avesi in the third quarter in 2019. After financial highlights, I will give more detailed overview about sales and costs. The performance of the group continues to be good. Compared to the third quarter in 2018, the total sales revenues remain stable at 16.49 million euros. Whilst the sales of water and wastewater services increased by 2.5% or 0.33 million euros, the pipe construction and asphalting services were down by 17.2% or 0.43 million euros. Stormwater treatment and disposal services revenues from main service area increased by 10% or 0.08 million euros. 
The gross profit for the third quarter in 2019 was higher by 3.8% or 0.33 million euros compared to the same period in 2018. The gross profit was impacted by lower maintenance costs, chemical costs, and costs related to construction services. In the third quarter, in 2019, the operating profit was 0.21 million euros higher than in the same period in 2018, being additionally affected by the loss of disposing assets, as for some part in Harko, the water company was changed. Compared to the third quarter in 2018, the net profit of the company was 0.19 million euros higher, being additionally affected by the lower change of fair value of swap contracts. Now let's move on to the next slides, and I will comment on the changes in revenues and expenses a bit closer. Let's start from the sales. Total sales revenues for the third quarter, as mentioned before, remain stable. Total revenues from more than wastewater services were by 2.5% or 0.33 million euros higher than in the third quarter of 2018, amounting to 13.32 uh, million euros. As we still operate with the frozen tariffs till the end of November 2019, the change in water and wastewater services uh, revenues were solely driven by the consumption. The domestic consumption in Tallinn and Sao area increased compared to the same period in 2018 by 1.8% 1 or 128,000 cubic meters to 7.3 million cubic meters. The increase in domestic sector came from apartment blocks. The consumption in apartment blocks increased by 2%. The commercial sector consumption in Tallinn and Sao area remained relatively stable. The increase was 0.8% or 21,000 cubic meters to 2.6 million cubic meters. The increase came from the increased consumption in the leisure segment related to the new leisure centers, centers in town. Total volumes for outside service area have shown an increase by 15.7% to 1.56 million cubic meters compared to the comparative period in 2018. The increase was mainly driven by higher waste and storm water volumes. So motor volumes uh, within the main service area were higher by 25.1%. The revenues from construction and asphalting services showed a decrease of 17.2% or 0.43 million euros compared to the third quarter in 2018. This now takes us to the costs. The total cost of goods sold in the third quarter of 2019 were lower by 4.2%. 0.3 million euros, amounting to 7.6 million euros. Direct main production costs have increased by 6.4% or 102,000 euros, mostly due to higher electricity costs. Electri electricity costs increased by 23.5% to 0.77 million euros, and it's driven by an average 22.5% higher prices and 11.9% bigger wastewater volumes. Chemical cost decrease of 10% to 0.42 million euros is driven mainly by lower price of methanol accompanied by the lower use of chemicals in the wastewater treatment process. At the same time, the chemical usage in the water treatment process was slightly higher. Staff costs increased by 6.4% to 1.55 million euros. The increase is mainly driven by higher number of employees, but also salary increases. Depreciation costs increased 4.1% to 1.31 million euros. The increase is related to the main uh, change of accounting for leases as IFRS 16 became effective from the 1st of January 2019. Construction and asphalting services costs decreased 21.1% to 1.78 million euros and it's related to lower pipe construction and asphalting services revenues mentioned earlier. Other costs of goods sold decrease of 7.9% to 1.23 million euros is mainly related to timing of asset maintenance costs balanced slightly by higher sludge disposal costs. Administrative and marketing costs increase of 1.9% to 1.2 million euros is mainly related to slightly higher staff costs. Bigger net financial expenses were mostly related to the revaluation of swap contracts. It takes us now to the cash flows. The cash position uh, as of uh, 30th of September 2019 is strong. The company's cash, cash balance stood at 
12 million euros, forming 23.8% of the total assets. Compared to the end of the third quarter in 2018, the cash balance has increased by 4.36 million euros. The biggest contribution to the cash flows comes from the main operations. The company's collection of receivables continues to be high, being 99.8% on average. In 2019, net cash flows from investing activities resulted a cash outflow of 3.91 million euros compared to the cash outflow of 4.08 million euros in the comparative period in 2018. The investments into fixed assets has been at uh, 0.78 million euros lower than in 2018. The compensation for pipes receives were 0.55 million euros lower than as um, during the nine months in 2018. The company's financing cash flows were negative of 21.43 million euros, which is 11.17 million more than in 2018. In 2019, the company paid out dividends of 75 cents per share, which is more than twice than in 2018. During the first six months, the company paid back the first installment of the loan in the amount of 1.8 million euros. The second installment uh, will be paid in November. Thank you. Thank you both for the presentation. Now we will move on to answering uh, all of the questions that you may have. We've already received uh, at least a few, but before starting uh, to answer those, we will allow for a couple of minutes for you all to submit your questions. So once again, please type in your questions to the uh, question box on the right-hand side of your screen. Okay, thank you very much for submitting your questions. We will uh, start answering those now. So first, uh, we will start with a question that was received in advance from Enna Umma, who wanted to know how will the future tariff changes take place for Tallinn Avesi. So Rina Kai, please, uh, could you comment on that? Thank you for the question. As uh, you are very well aware of, our tariffs were approved by CA, so going forward also our tariffs will be under the regulation of uh, competition authority, meaning that uh, their methodology, methodology will be applic applicable to us. Uh, as regards to uh, the change or need uh, for the change of tariff, uh, it's something that is regulated uh, in uh, the law and uh, it's effectively related with uh, the cost base of the company, meaning that if the costs will change um, a lot, then the company 
needs or has a right to uh, turn to the competition authority with a new tariff regulation. It's not something that is uh, done periodically, saying that uh, the company must uh, turn to competition authority every six months or every year, but it's more related with the uh, costs and investments of the company. So if it's needed to increase the tariff uh, as a result of uh, guaranteeing a good operation of the company, the company does so. Thank you, Rina Gay, for the question. Now, I uh, will be reading out the next question, which is quite uh, long, consisting of uh, many questions. And this one was uh, asked by Veiko Ninamä. Hi, everyone, and congrats on the great quarter. I would appreciate if you could please add some color to the following areas. What is the expected decline in annual EBITDA from regulated activities as a result of the new tariff? How much additional EBITDA is the company generating from other activities such as Watercom and other services you provide to the city of Tallinn? And what would be your total EBITDA estimate for 2020? Now that the tariff dispute is over, does the company plan to distribute a larger dividend? So we will be slowly starting off with those, uh, those questions and answers. Thank you for the question again. Uh, this time I will just leave you some room for calculation yourself as well. But nevertheless, uh, as regards to uh, the drop in revenues, uh, it is quite remarkable, as you, you could um, understand yourself, because the drop in tariffs uh, was quite big. But the effect on revenues would be around 10 million euros still, and uh, that close to the EBITDA, EBITDA level. What we try to do, and what Carl already mentioned, is uh, we are seeking for efficiencies uh, that are not very big, so it, it won't kind of cover the gap of 10 million. We are growing Watercom and we are putting effort on, on this uh, area as well. Uh, first of all, in order to grow something, uh, as you are very well uh, aware of, then you need to uh, increase costs as well, because it's, it's not always related uh, that you can grow uh, continuously and not put anything into it. But uh, this um, area is not as profitable, uh, so it's uh, still pipe construction and uh, the um, pro profit margin in, in this area are around 6 to 8%, uh, not much more. So uh, you can easily kind of figure, figure out uh, what would be the EBITDA level uh, going forward. What the company is planning to do, we are seeking the efficiencies wherever possible, but the main uh, target uh, of the company will remain to provide high uh, quality service to all our clients and uh, be uh, a partner to our investors as well. Thank you. Thank you, Rina. Uh, we have uh, another question which is related to the recent news that uh, Rina Kai, uh, the CFO, will be leaving the company. Uh, and the question is, do you, all, do you already have a replacement for Rina to lead company through new challenging, challenging financial year? minus 20% in revenues and minus 40 to 50% in profit will require a really strong background. So I will uh, give that to Carl to answer. Okay, thank you, Belize, and thank you for the question. And, and yes, there is a, a recruitment campaign that's underway currently. And we're, we're currently working with a short list of candidates. We do have our uh, NOMCO, uh, REMCO meeting next week. And I'm hoping to put forward those candidates at that meeting and, and come out of there and be able to make an offer to an appropriate uh, CFO for the future. Thank you, Carl. So moving on to the next question. Do we have any identification for 2019 possible dividend on old profit rate? Uh, and any estimations for 2020, 2021, when new tariffs will take full result? So question about dividends. The dividends will be decided still in spring. Um, we uh, haven't formed the di new dividend policy still yet, as the tariff news are quite new. So the dividend policy should be reviewed and formed uh, uh, early next year. So um, more information will be given as regards to dividend policy going uh, forward uh, next year. But the company is uh, still there for the investors as well. So. Uh, the profits will be shared with uh, our uh, investors as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just probably just to add to that, that's obviously one of the new CFO's first jobs is to look at the dividend policy going forwards. 
uh, we also have to have in the back of our mind the potential of third party claims. We do have a provision there. Uh, we need to keep an eye on that as well when we're making these decisions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we have um, another third question from Justinas uh, Miskis, who was also the one to ask the previous questions. Do you have any new guidelines from the main shareholders on their expectations of the company when new tariffs have hit its profitability? Okay, and, and, and simple answer, no, that's that's very much a, a topic for the shareholders to consider themselves. Uh, I, I'm certainly not in the loop of any of those discussions, um, I'm afraid to say. Thank you, Carl. Uh, the next question is uh, by Sander Daniel, who wants to um, uh, know what are the changes in Harko area activities that resulted in 0 0.16 million euros uh, property losses? Uh, during this summer, uh, it was decided that part of the Harko area will be operated by Strantum and therefore we disposed some of the pipes in there and uh, that resulted uh, some loss in um, sales of assets as the residual value was higher than it was uh, agreed uh, of uh, giving them over. At the same time, the hit on our revenues is not as big because we still provide uh, them uh, bulk services for wastewater services and also in some cases water services. So the water services is uh, uh, a little bit more unsecured due to the fact that uh, they are used to use uh, this borehole uh, water instead of surface water, but we can foresee that they are taking uh, water services from us as well. So uh, the impact is not that big, but uh, it did have this effect because usually we don't uh, sell our assets uh, with loss. Thank you, Rina. And uh, there was one uh, last question uh, from Marvida Sergevicius, but uh, this was also related to the dividend uh, rate, which uh, I believe Rina has already covered uh, sufficiently. Yeah. Yeah. So we will uh, give you a couple of more minutes. Uh, if any of you have any follow up questions, then please uh, type them uh, in. We will be waiting for a minute or two. Thank you. We have another question from Marvita Sekevicius, who wants to know what the company's plans are related to provisions for the possible customer claims, which are close to one euro per share. Uh, can you return it to the shareholders now? Rina, please. Uh, thank you for the question. We definitely can't return uh, this right now to the shareholders because the company has made the provision for purpose, meaning that there is still a risk that clients might turn to the company with their claims. Uh, the fact that we haven't received any substantiated claims yet uh, is irrelevant because the tariffs will still, the new tariffs will start uh, becoming effective from the 1st of December. Uh, at the same time, I want to uh, stress out that those tariffs are applied for the future, but the company is not immune that no customers will not uh, ask for compensation and there won't be any disputes as regards to this one. So. Right now, it's too early uh, to uh, release the provision, so the provision uh, should stand there. It will be reviewed at the end of the year, uh, but uh, if there won't be any claims in the near future, then it's a possibility to decide uh, what the company will do it and or uh, giving it to the investor. I just, I just add something to what Rena said. Rena's quite, quite correct in what she's saying. But as a company, what we have done recently is strengthened our legal support so that we can respond to any such claims quickly and effectively. So we are we have uh, engaged another law firm recently to help us with that going forwards, because those first few claims, should they materialise, it's very important, the outcome from those. Thank you, Rina and Carl. As we seem to have quite a few questions uh, today, we will uh, give you a couple of more minutes to ask, uh, ask your questions. So please, if you have any, type them in now.
Okay, and we're back. So Sander uh, Daniel has uh, asked us a question. What are the areas where efficiencies could be achieved in coming years? So Carl, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, we've, we've talked extensively about Watercom. That's obviously one area that we'll, we'll be looking at. We also need to look into the wider business and what we can do. It's probably unfair of me at this stage to get in any t detail, but what I can tell you, we've, we've formed a, a project and a project working group. And I, and I will be looking to make an, employ, an employment in the near future for someone to, to head that up. Um, what we've also got to have in mind, though, is the, the tariff mechanism, how it works. So in terms of if you reduce costs dramatically, then in theory, those costs would go back to the regulator at the uh, future application. So we also need to be mindful of that as well. But I can assure you we are looking at this area very closely. Um, I think to fill the gap of 10 million is going to be one heck of a challenge, so it's not going to happen overnight. But I will I assure you that I will be doing all I can to replace some of those lost, that lost profitability going forward. Thank you, Carl. And um, then uh, we have another question from uh, Justina Miskinis, who is asking uh, about the arbitration, uh, arbitration case. Will you be using some law company for any future claims uh, from customers? As it seems, law company needs to be changed. Smiley face. Okay. Well, in terms of the arbitration, that was um, that was a, a law firm back in the UK, uh, Link Laters and Herbert Smith Freehills. I can tell you, we won't be using those. Um, it will be local Estonian law firms. Uh, but I think it's probably inappropriate for me to disclose those two names to you at the moment. Two of them, I hasten to add. So there will be two law firms working in parallel with each other. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And uh, we have another question from Sander Daniel, who is asking uh, when the CA could reduce their WAC uh, rates for water companies. Thank you, Sander. Uh, it has been a discussion over the uh, weighted average cost of capital uh, new rates. Uh, um, it will be done uh, for all sectors, not only for water sector. Uh, when uh, it will exactly happen, we don't know. That is uh, under the discretion of uh, CA. So we, we don't have kind of exact data as, as regards to this one yet. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rina. We have uh, run out of questions uh, at this point, but uh, if you have any, then this is now your last chance to submit them uh, during the webinar. So we will be waiting for 10, 15 seconds for those. Okay, seems like uh, you've run out of questions. Thank you very much for your, your many questions this time. So before we end uh, today's webinar, I'd like to give it over uh, to Carl for a very brief uh, closing remark. Please. Okay, Carl. thank you, Elise, and thank you very much for all your questions today. I think just before we conclude things, I just want to uh, say a few words. So as I'm sure you're, well, you're all aware, uh, Rena will be leaving this business at the end of the year and is going to become the CFO of Estonian company Ellering. Um, Rena has been with the company for seven years um, and during that time has been instrumental in the continued and performance of the business. She's been uh, massively involved in investor relations and corporate governance and uh, has, has made a real key, played a real key part in that. Um, she's also been a lead figure in supporting the previous tariff dispute that's, uh, as, as we said before, has gone on for, for nine years. And more recently, the tariff application and the result that we got with the uh, competition authority. So I'd just like to take this opportunity to personally thank Rena for all the hard work during this stone drove over seven years and wish her all the very best for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Indeed, it's been a pleasure to work with Telling Water. I wish 
the very best for the company also in the future. And I, I really believe in this company and the company has a, good, a great future in head. Thank you. Thank you very much for Reen and Carr for those uh, remarks as well as the presentations. As always, the recording of the presentation will be available on Nasdaq Baltic YouTube channel. Uh, webinar playlist very shortly after the presentation is over and the presentation materials and reports can be found on Tallinn Navesi's web page. Carl and Rina, thank you very much for the webinar and participants, thank you very much for listening and uh, asking your questions. Have a good day. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you. Bye.